One of the biggest questions I get is how do I meet new people? New people in a new city, but also new people in an old city. Especially as we're becoming more social, we're trying to figure out how can we meet new people and the right people. A horrifying Oxford study found that we all begin to lose friends starting at age 25. This means that for every year that we're living, we're losing friends, not gaining friends. My entire goal with this video is to help you think of some new ways for you to meet new people and make sure you're meeting the right people. Before I get into specific places you can meet new people, I wanna give a couple of tips that are a little counterintuitive, but work so well for meeting new people. So I've moved all over the world. I've had to make new friends from scratch. I moved from LA to Atlanta, to LA again, to Oregon, to Texas. I lived in China for a while. I've moved all over the world and I found that meeting friends, you can use the same strategies no matter where you are. And you can use these even in an old city. So even if you're not in a new city, you need a little refresh, you wanna meet some fresh new people, you can use these strategies. First, look for long lines. This is such a weird one, but it's hard to walk into a room or walk into a bar or coffee shop and be like, hey, I'm Vanessa. Nice to meet you. Okay, I would love if you could do that, but that's intimidating. It's so much easier when you do this. Do, do, do. Someone's in front of you in line. Someone's behind you. So uh, what brings you here? Oh, or the person in front of you. Oh, that looks great. What'd you order? It's so much easier when you're in a line because there's so many context cues. You can ask about the food, the drink, what brings you here, how do you know the host? So look for long lines. That's one of the secret ways that you can meet new friends at all these locations. Second little tip here, go towards people. Again, this is counterintuitive. So what do you do when you go to a big outdoor concert? You look for a big wide open spot, right? You look for a big open spot in the grass. What do you do when you walk into a big cafeteria? You go to the open table. Not if you're trying to meet new people. I want you to go towards the people. Put your blanket right next to people who look like they could be your friends. Sit at the people at the table with a couple of people on it. Go to where the crowd is hanging out. This is counterintuitive and especially for my introverts. This is one of the best ways you can meet people without having to be so forward. If you're close to people in proximity, you're sitting next to them on a blanket, you're behind them in line, you're sitting near someone at a table, it's so much easier to strike up casual conversation. In fact, they might strike up casual conversation with you. So move your blanket a little closer to people, pick the crowded table, go stand where the cool people or the not cool people, I hang out with not cool people, are hanging out. That proximity is gonna make it way easier to strike up casual conversation. Third little tip. Go early and leave late. I find that when I'm at a party, a barbecue, a networking event, a bar, a club, it's so hard when it's packed, when it's at maximum capacity. I'm an ambivert, so I have some introverted tendencies and extroverted tendencies. When it's too crowded, I'm overwhelmed and I retreat and I only talk to people I already know. If I get there before my friends and it's a little quiet, a, I don't have my existing friends to lean on. It's a little emptier, so people are also looking for someone to talk to, and it's so much easier to strike conversation. Same thing with staying late. So see if you can try to challenge yourself. You can hang out with people you know in the middle, but early and late, you try to meet a couple of those early uh, A-type people and those late stragglers. Weird one, this is a weird tip, graze, never have a full plate. What I mean by this is I used to go at parties or work events, I'd go and I'd get my plate of dinner or lunch or dessert, whatever it was, and then I'd sit down and I'd eat and then I'd meet people. What I realized was the process of standing in the buffet, of getting my plate, of sitting at a table, created so many friendship opportunities. It was such a great way to meet new people. So what I want you to do is always have a small plate, graze. Go up to the buffet when there's a line, where we like lines, and then you're like, oh, that looks good. Oh, those tapas look great. And then you're at the buffet and you're like, oh, what's that sauce over there? And you're striking up conversation. And then you look for a table with people at it, right? We're looking for people. Oh, that table has a couple people at it. I'm gonna sit there. And then about 20 minutes in, you've met everyone at your table. You go get back in line, go back to the buffet, get your second round. That way you're having three or four opportunities for being in line, going to tables, you're grazing and you're making conversation each of the ways. The biggest mistake people make is they get their food or their drink and then they try to meet new people. No, your food and drink, that's the best way to meet new people. Last little tip here before we get into places, bring the right wingman or wingwoman. 
If you have someone you wanna go with who's gonna make you feel confident and secure, great, bring them. But then have a deal, you're gonna have meet new people time. That's when you separate and meet new people or you introduce each other to new people. You also wanna bring people who are gonna build you up, who are gonna brag about you, who are gonna make you feel confident. So make sure that you're setting yourself up for success by going to the event or the spot with the right people. Okay, now let's talk about my 10 favorite spots to meet new people. Again, this is if you're in a new city or you're in an old city and need a little bit of a refresh. Number one, highly specialized events. A lot of the times people go to big networking events where there's no purpose or the only purpose is to network and they're so high pressure. I would rather you go to highly specialized events. The reason for this is because one, you're gonna find your people. You're gonna find people who are also attracted to that same event. And two, it's gonna give you more to talk about. At a networking event, you inevitably end up with what do you do? Where are you from? Have you been here before? Boring, 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 boring. At a highly specialized event, Renaissance fair, Comic-Con events, a scrapbooking fair, book club about vampires, YA club, nonprofit, charity you love, those are all really specific. And then you can talk about specific things. I wanna give you a really ridiculous specific example here. So a couple weeks ago, I went to a train expo. I know, I'm really cool do a lot of cool stuff on the weekends. I was at a train expo because my daughter loves trains. And so we went, we saw the little miniature trains and I talked to people in a lot of overalls and we rode a little train and I was standing looking at a giant miniature train exhibit and someone next to me goes, Vanessa? And I was like, Allison? And it was my friend from high school. Now we're both in a new city, but she was taking her kids to the train expo. And we immediately bonded about how much our kids love train. Our kids are the same age. Our kids began to bond over trains. And now we're hanging out all the time. This was a highly specialized place on a highly specialized topic. And so I was able to reconnect with the right person, with the kids of the same age as mine. And we have so much in common. So I want you to think about what's a highly specialized event, a fair, a gathering, a charitable event where you're gonna meet like-minded people. Those are the kind of events I want you to go to. Second, book clubs. So book clubs are really special because you're learning together. Anytime you're doing something together, you're gonna to forge deeper friendships. A lot of the time, it's hard to forge new friendships when you're just grabbing coffees. You're not actually doing something. You don't have shared goals. In book clubs, you have first a shared goal. Everyone's trying to read the same book at the same time. And then second, you're learning together. You're discussing together. You have lots of topics to discuss. So book clubs solve two different problems. One is it has a shared goal, so there's a reason to get together. And second, it makes it really easy to never have an awkward silence. If you can always talk about the book, you're never gonna run out of things to say. So I want you to think, what is your favorite kind of book or your favorite genre of book or a book that you're, a type of book that you're curious about? Can you join an existing book club or can you start a book club with people that you've been wanting to join or start friendships with? You can even do this digitally or online, a virtual book club, or you can join a book club at a local event. When I uh, first moved back to Los Angeles, back when I was really young, let's pretend it was a really long time ago, I really love vampire fiction. <laughs> I know, I'm just so cool. You're learning so much about me. I really like vampire fiction. And so I started a vampire fiction book club. No joke. Open to the public, post it on meetup.com. And I met super cool people. We all dressed in black. We wore dark lipstick. We talked about vampires. It was great. I met some of my closest friends. Third, city tour. Now, hear me out on this one. City tours are great if you're new to a city, but they're also great if you're in an existing city. And I don't even want you to just do a regular city tour. I would highly recommend doing specialized city tours. A lot of people don't realize that there are all kinds of unique city tours, like ghost tours, architecture tours, historical walking tours, street food tours, food cart tours. I want you to think about, and I want you to Google search or look on Airbnb experiences, what kind of unique tours are in your city? One, you might meet other new people to your city. Two, you're probably gonna meet the host of the tour, who's probably an extrovert, where you can say, hey, I'm new to this city, or I'm old to this city, and I'm looking to meet new people. Tell me what the cool places to go are. Where, where do you like to hang out? And that way, you're and not only seeing a new part of your city, but you're also meeting a like-minded person. Because if they're running an architecture tour, architectural tour and you're interested in architecture, that's your person. For language class, there is nothing like stumbling through a new language with other people. So I have found so many of my closest friends learning languages. I learned Spanish in high school, then I learned French, then I learned Mandarin. 
I met my husband learning Mandarin. He was a, a fellow English speaker trying to learn Mandarin. And we bonded so quickly because one, we had a shared goal, right? Remember that shared goal we're learning together. And two, we were fumbling and laughing and having all these really halting conversations in Mandarin. And that bonded us more than ever and we ended up getting married. So I have a soft spot for language learning. So think about, is there a language you'd like to learn? Sign language, Spanish, French, English, whatever you're trying to learn. Hopefully you already know English or else this video is gonna be really boring. And see if you can sign up for a class, not just an app. So an app doesn't help you meet new people, but a class really helps. Oftentimes with foreign language, they also have language social hours where you could go and practice your language at a bar or a concert at a networking event. That also gives you something specific to talk about. So think about trying to learn a language and trying to practice people. You never know, you might meet your soulmate. Five, trivia nights. Okay, this one is only for you if you love trivia. I would definitely not recommend if you don't like trivia or you're not good at trivia to go to a trivia night. You're not gonna meet your people. But if you love facts, you're really good at historical trivia, you're really good at pop culture trivia, trivia nights are a great way to meet people, especially because you'll often join a team where you can meet people who are already there and they're looking for the same experience. One, you're never gonna run out of things to say because there's trivia happening. Two, you're meeting like-minded people who are interested in facts and data like you. And three, it's in a casual setting. So if you're uncomfortable, you could always change tables, change teams, or take a step back. I love trivia nights for people who love trivia. I do not love trivia. I am terrible at trivia, but I know so many friends who have met their best friends at trivia nights. So this is for you if you love facts. Six, dance class. Again, if you like dance or you're curious about dance, this is a great one for you. The reason for this is because what most people don't realize is that a lot of clubs, especially salsa or line dancing or swing dancing, they'll have a learning hour before the actual dancing or the band starts. This is a great way to meet people because people are there to learn. And again, you have a shared learning goal. So think about, are you interested in swing or salsa or line dancing? And could you look up a local club or a local bar that has classes before they actually play the music? Then you're partnering up with people, you're switching around, you're talking about the salsa, you're talking about the music, you're go getting a drink together, you're standing in line, you're going to the crowds. It is a great way to mingle very quickly with other like-minded people. And you do not have to be good at this. If you're a beginner, you're going to meet the most people. So when I went to do a salsa class and it was incredible, I had so much fun. I was a pure beginner and everyone was so kind. They were so helpful. I met so many interesting people and I found that being the newbie, being a beginner actually helped me meet more of those new people. So dance class, especially if you're feeling brave, Seven, specific fitness class or gym. So a lot of people like to go to the gym to meet people. And that works if you're an extrovert. You know, you can be running next to someone or lifting and be like, hey bro, what are you lifting? I don't do that. I, I don't go to the gym to meet people because I am way too ambiverted to meet people at the gym. However, I have been able to meet people at specific fitness gyms or specific locations in your gym. For example, the sauna. The sauna is a great way to meet people if you have a gym that has one because people don't have their ear pods in. Usually you get kind of sweaty and wet. So it's pretty easy to make some small talk, bring up conversation. It's quiet, it's warm, it's wet. That's a little weird, but it actually does really help meeting people. Or you can meet people at a specific kind of fitness center like a racket club or a golf club or a tennis club? Is there a specific kind of fitness center or class where you can learn a new skill, remember learning is always good, and meet similar like-minded people? So gym is great if you're an extrovert, but specific fitness class within that gym or a sauna or the pool if you're a little bit nervous and want a reason to talk to people. Eight, volunteer work beach cleanup, soup kitchen, volunteering at a pantry. This is my favorite one because you truly meet other kind, like-minded people. I was able to volunteer at a beautiful soup kitchen in Portland. I met so many incredible people, other volunteers, people in charge of the organization. I highly recommend if there is a cause that you're really passionate about, that is a wonderful way to have something to talk about, something to do together, a shared goal. By creating things together or donating together or having campaigns together, it's a really great way to have lots of conversation, a shared goal, and also you meet the right kind of people with the right kind of mindset. Nine, hiking or run clubs. So I love going on walks with people. I find that sometimes if you're trying to meet new people and you're sitting in a coffee shop, it's too intimidating. So I would rather hike or walk. I also know that some of my friends have joined run clubs. They meet great people who are right at their pace. They're training for half marathons, they're training for marathons. So think about, is there a hiking group, a hiking club, a nature walking club, or a run club that you can join where you're again using a shared goal, you're meeting people with like-minded interests, and it's really easy to talk about what you're doing. Running, hiking, jogging, climbing, nature looking, all those things. 
10, block parties. So this is a really good tip if you're willing to take the plunge. So I know this is a little bit, this is a bigger one, but whether you're in a new city or old city, meeting your neighbors, meeting people who are right in your neighborhood, it becomes very easy to slowly build up friendships. When we first moved to our neighborhood, I held a big block party. I just put out a bunch of candy, got some sodas, got a, I think I ordered a couple of pizzas. We actually borrowed a bounce house and put up a bounce house for the kids. And I just told everyone on our block, hey, we're having a block party for a couple of hours. It was an incredible way to meet our neighbors and it made it easier over the next few months to slowly build up relationships. So I highly recommend, if you feel brave enough, host your own block party. Again, this can happen if you're new in a city or if you're old in a city. The idea of reaching out to your neighbors is one of the best ways to be close to the people who you're seeing on a daily basis. And it's always good to know your neighbor. I want to do a little bonus one here, which is offering public advice or help. Uh, one of my friends, Maddie, she moved to a new city and she didn't know anyone. And she was moving to the new city and did all this research on buying a new house. And she discovered that there was all these weird city regulations and insider tips and strategies and things you should know about neighborhoods. She put everything she learned buying in a house into a little PDF and she put it up online for free. She put it up on her Twitter for free. And she said, hey, this is a little PDF that I use when I was buying a house. If it helps you, go ahead and use it and then come and take me out. We'll meet for tacos. She found that she was able to meet other like-minded people who were moving to the new city, who were looking to buy a new house and who benefited from her PDF. She said that she has more friends than she can handle simply from offering that out there. So I'd also say if you have a piece of knowledge or advice you have for people and you're willing to share that and offer that help, that can also be a great way to meet people because you're offering help and they're coming to you and you're meeting the right people based on the help that you're offering. I hope that one of these ideas resonated below the video. Be sure to put a comment with the way that you like to meet new people, any tips or strategies or hacks that you have that we can help each other. If you like this video, give it a like. I'm so happy to know you, to meet you. You're an old friend in my life if you've been watching my YouTube videos and you're a new friend if you've just come. Welcome, I'm so excited you're here. I try to post videos every Tuesday. Sometimes Wednesday, sometimes Thursday, sometimes Friday, depending on how late we are. But I try to post videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get all the new ones and I'll see you in our next video. Are you living up to your full potential? Do you want more? I would love to help you. Get started with my free training and learn more about People School today. Visit scienceofpeople.com slash peaceschool. Did you love this video? Then you might love my book, Cues. In this book, I break down all the hidden signals that we're sending to each other with our body language, our voice, and even our face. Check it out wherever books are sold, and I read the audiobook too.